beautiful, beautiful weather, beautiful day uh, to sit and to hear what Bailey and Matthew had to say to each other uh, was, to me, it was pretty impressive to hear young people on fire for Jesus and what they had to say about their love for one another and their love for Jesus. And then to hear their friends, the bridesmaids and the groomsmen give toast and just brag on their friendship that they had with Bailey and Matthew and uh, it was very, very heart touching and uh, they're on their way to Barbados so if you would pray for them as they go on their honeymoon and uh, we would appreciate that. Thank you for all the kind words and love for our family as they got married yesterday. Jonathan Dupee was my good friend from Oklahoma. Uh, he had to rub it in and wear a Cowboys shirt this morning and not the Dallas Cowboys, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, but we're still friends. Uh, my friend Mike Mackey here from North Carolina and his wife Dreema too. Uh, it was great to have my friends with me for this special occasion, but I'd ask Jonathan to share and he's been watching. He watches and comments through the week on Grace Life post and he knew we were on just Jesus and he's going to talk about Jesus this morning. Would you welcome Jonathan Dupee as he comes to share with us this morning. All right, let me turn that. Are you on? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you are. It's me. That I never thought I would get to do, but God had plans. And when we follow God, we don't know what we're going to run into. But it's exciting. And uh, so I've had to get a pair of glasses <laughs> since I've been here last. <laughs> I just made my print a little bigger on the page. Um, but I'm thankful today that God is good all the time. And I'm thankful that Jesus is on our side, that I'm thankful for the freedom we have in Jesus. If you're not experiencing the freedom you have in Jesus, then you need to ask Him for more freedom. Because we need freedom in the Lord. And when Jamie asked me to speak, I said, well, Jamie, what, where are we at in this? And he said, it's just Jesus. I said, okay. I said, what, what, what have you talked about so I don't repeat or, you know, over things? He, so he said, he's the lamb. He's the healer. He's the provider. Amen. He's a touch and miracle worker. He's a deliverer. He is a life giver, the redeemer. But he's also our friend. Amen. And when you have a friend like that can give you all of that, yes. what a friend he is. Amen. And when, I, when he told me, he said, it's just Jesus, I feel like Jesus said, I want you to tell him I'm their friend. I want you to tell him I want to be their friend. Because we were made for the friendship with God. So let's pray. Jesus, we pray today that, Lord, that as the message goes out, that the words come out will be yours and not mine. I encourage the people today, oh God, to receive. We thank you today, today, Sunday, we can worship you, Lord, but we thank you that we can worship you every day. And we give you praise, glory, and honor for today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, just for a few, just want to share with you for just a brief few minutes on what you were made. You were made for a friendship with God. See, God does not just want to know, know about Him, He wants us to know Him, not just about. We can have acquaintances, but God has wanted us to experience His friendship. Jonathan Edwards urges us to let it be our first love to enter into an everlasting friendship with Christ that never shall be broken. The gospel calls us to trust Jesus as our Savior, correct, and as our King, submit to Him as our King, and value Him as our treasure. It also calls us to enjoy Him as our friend, to enjoy Him as our friend. But how do we view Him today? Do you view him as just as our, as our Savior, just as our King, just as our Lord? Because I think it's sometimes, because here's another question. What does it mean to trust him as our friend? And how do, how do we experience friendship? Maybe how do we experience, I, I, do we know how to separate Savior from King? Is it, are we able to do that? Because sometimes we can say, oh yeah, I, I'm, he, he's my Savior, and he's my King of Kings, and he's my Lord of Lords. And that's wonderful. But Jesus said, you know what? You are made to be my friends. And when we say that, I'm not taken away from the glory of God by no means. The thing is, we can have both. And there's benefits to all of it. 
So Jesus gathered his disciples for the last time, the night, the last supper. And he prepared them for the next day and beyond. In the midst of this sacred evening, he said in John 15, okay, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I know that my father, all that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. See, to be called Jesus' servant is immeasurable privileges. Yet Jesus confers it a greater honor. He brings us even closer. He calls us friends. It is an honor to be a, to, for us to be a servant for Jesus, to be a pastor, to be a preacher, to be a teacher. But it's also a greater honor for us to be friends. Why? Because he said, if we, now that I call you friends, I've made known to you what my father says. See, sometimes the king may not tell the servants everything. And the servants may not know everything. So Jesus says, time out. It's time to put that all aside. And I want you to be my friends because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. How many times do we like, what does Jesus want me to do? I need to know more here. I need to know. This. See, Jamie is my friend. And I can pick, call up the phone and call him on the phone, and he'll tell me everything. I, we talk about a lot of things. There's a lot of things I don't know about Jamie and about me, a lot of personal stuff we talk about. But the more we talk about together, the greater our relationship is. The more we spend time with God as our friend, the greater our relationship looks. It's not that Jesus changes. We change. See, the more time I talk with Jamie, the more things I pick up from Jamie the more attitude, the demeanor, the, the wisdom and stuff like that. And the more time we spend with God as a friend, we're going to look more like him. Pick up his attributes, pick up his demeanor, pick up his language. See, when I began to study this, and I said, you know, when it said we were made for friendship with God, my idea was like, you know what? When I get mad, I get frustrated. Sometimes I'll call Jamie and say, hey, man, this is what's going on. This is what's going on. And he listens. He doesn't, it doesn't matter what my attitude is like. It doesn't matter what I say. He just listens. See, that's the way God is. God is like, you know what? Bring it all to me. Bring your frustrations. Bring your aggravations, complaints, whatever it is. I'll hear it all. I'll take it all in because I want to be your friend. That's what a friend does. He listens. A true friend is always there in a time of need. And where is Jesus? He's always there in a time of need. Try it out. Sometimes, we, maybe we don't have, maybe we don't, here's the word freedom again, because I think it's so important in life. We talk, me and Jamie and talk a lot about this. Maybe we don't have the freedom to approach God to say, with our aggravations. Maybe we don't have the freedom to say, to tell God, say, you know what, I'm mad about this situation, God. I'm mad about this. I'm mad about my boss. And maybe you dropped some words that you shouldn't have said. He doesn't care. He says, you know what, that's fine. I'm going to work with you in that area. Here, try this. Here, try that. See, when I have another friend at home. His name is Pat. Him and I talk all the time. He'll say, man, Jonathan, have you ever experienced this before? you ever got this problem? you ever been frustrated? Yes. And we tell things, but then we, we, we give each other advice. Hey, try this next time. Hey, approach it this way. See, we're honest with one another. Jesus wants to be honest with you. He's not going to reject you for bringing stuff to him that you think is he shouldn't know. He already knows. What he wants to do is bring it to him so he can help fix it. It's not him changing. It's you he wants to change. He wants you to look at him as a friend, trustworthy friend. If Jesus left it all to come off the throne, to come down to you, what does that look like? What does that look like to you? That looks like this. What's up, Jesus? How you doing? Now listen, again, I'm not into saying chubby or, or buddy or bro, nothing like that. He is a king and he's a lord, but we recognize him as our friend as well. The two pieces of evidence show his sincerity. First, he opened his heart with transparency. While a master doesn't tell a servant what he's doing, Jesus reveals his father, Father's will to you, and, what would, and he would send his spirit to ensure that all future disciples would hear these words. John 14, 26 talks about, I don't know if it's up there. Just give me a second. It is 14, 20. Oh, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said. See, Jesus wants to tell us a lot of things. Maybe you don't remember it all. Maybe we don't, man, what would he see? The Holy Spirit's here to remind you. Hey, remember what your friend said? This is what he said. This is what it's all about. He brings it to your memory so you don't forget it. 
Because it's important. We need that in our life. Second, the cross what? He proves our friendship. Greater love has no man than this, than he laid down his life for you. Jesus, oh man, I'm telling you, he has already done the work. He's already performed. Say, hey, I am already want you as my friend. Why? Because I've already laid it out. To me, the gospel is all about the friendship of Jesus. He's already laid it out. He laid his life down. He said, I want, Jamie wasn't even, none of us you even thought about. He said, I'm going to take care of all the situation. I'm going to lay my life down because I want to be their friends. I'm going to show it up front. So when they know, when they begin to know me, hey, he's your friend. Jesus wants to be your friend. He wanted his disciples to see the cross and think, I understand now. He submitted himself for me under God's love. And he did it because he views me as his treasured friend. He wants us to view the cross as an affection-filled sacrifice for his friends. He laid down, he took care of everything. He took care of all the stuff that we would probably trip over, our sins, our issues, things that we would be like, oh God, I'm not a perfect guy. I got issues. Yeah, yep, you're right. But you know what? I want to be your friend anyway. Because he don't make it about that. He makes it about the relationship. Friendship is in the deepest heart of Christ. And it is the very center of the gospel. How can you not see that that way? When God laid down his life for you as a friend, now to call you friends. No more servants. Because he wants you to know everything. He wants to tell you things. My friends tell me everything. We have, we have a great friendship. When, when Jamie comes to, and I want to thank you for allowing Jamie to come to, to the football games. I know he misses a Sunday. But it's great that he comes, hangs out with us. He hangs out with my buddy Pat. And, and we hang out together. We build each other up. That's what friends do. We talk about the Lord. We talk about a lot of things. And that's just an amazing thing, that, that God is wanting to say the same way. He wants us to, us to hang out with him and talk with him. Yet sometimes we can look at Jesus and, and as a friend and it can diminish the glory. But it's not. But we don't choose because both are true. Both are true. Jesus is our exalted king, and he's our truest friend. This doesn't minimize his glory, okay? It magnifies it. It makes him even more of a, of, 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 a, of a better relationship because he's our king, he's our Lord, but we can approach him as simple as, hey, God, how you doing? I'm in a situation right here. I need your help. And he's not going to beat you up. He's not going to reject you. Sometimes friends won't want to listen to you. Sometimes friends will reject you because you did something they didn't like. God's like, hey, I'm always here. I'm never going to reject you as a friend. Why? Why? Because he is loyal. A faithful friend is there for you through good and bad. It says that in Proverbs. Jesus is lawyer, loyal. Truth. Jesus will tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. Yeah. The he ain't going to beat you over the head. He's going to say it in love. Hey, honestly, you should have tried this. I mean, now listen. To me, that's how I view Jesus when I go to talk to him. He just talks back to me. You know? He, he's not up on the throne saying, oh, I hear you. No, he's like, hey, how's it going? I'm here. I'm helping you. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to fix the situation. Truth. A friend speaks the truth even when it's hard. In Proverbs, iron sharpens iron. It's talking about day. That's not an easy deal. If you look up how to sharpen iron, it takes effort. It's not easy, but it works. Love. A friend demonstrates a kind love described in 1 Corinthians. We talked about it last night at the wedding. How love is patient. Jesus is love. He is the love. A love never ends, and his love will never, lend, never end to you. Sacrifice. He just did the sacrifice. Friends willing to make a sacrifice for you. Jesus was willing to make it. We didn't ask. Didn't expect. He just did it. Jesus wants to be your friend. A friend is someone who can confide in. You can confide in Jesus. You can bring your secrets to him. You can let him know. Hey, I have, I have issues. An example of this, this is interesting. Jesus and Judas, they were friends. Jesus called Judas friend, even though he betrayed him. Come on, come on. Who Christ called as a friend, even though Judas was a traitor. Jesus also is a friend of sinners. It's what the Bible says. I didn't say it, Jesus did. Are we friend of sinners? Do we accept them as friends? Maybe sometimes I was thinking about this too as I was studying. Sometimes we'll go out and we'll, we'll meet somebody and they'll be struggling. 
Say, oh, brother, you need this, and, and, and you need that, and you need to be delivered, and, and all, we're trying all this stuff, and he might say, hey, I just need a friend. Boom. Jesus said, hey, he just needs a friend. That's me. That's me. I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend in the middle of the chaos. I'll be your friend in, in, in the middle of the situation you're going on. You know why? Because when Jesus comes into that friendship, he doesn't change. You change. And when you will see, I, I can't take advantage of Jamie's friendship unless I allow him to be my friend. It's my choice. It's my choice. It's your choice whether you allow Jesus to be your friend or be just an acquaintance. I'd benefit, we benefit more by allowing God to be our friend, our best friend, than just an acquaintance. It comes with more blessings. It comes with healing, miracles, redemption, whatever. That's what Jesus, he's all that in a bag of chips. Pour me another one, right? Christ wants us to view the cross as affection filled sacrifice for friends. You know, there's a great example. So, so but let me continue on. So, but, 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 does, but does relating to Jesus, a friend, diminish his authority in our lives? Not at all. Because when he calls us friends, he still remains our king. He said, you are my friends if you, if I, if you do what I command you. Now, Abraham was a friend of God. God called him friend because he did what God asked him to do. And look what happened to Abraham. You think he had some blessings? Come on. Sands. Does mean grains and in the sands? Is that right? Tenants, yes. So if we do what Jesus asked us to do as a friend, come on. Are the blessings there? Are, are, are the help, is the help there? Is the healing there? Is it there? Yes, it's there. It's a promise. And our obedience doesn't earn us nothing. Doesn't earn it. It proves our friendship. See, Abraham proved that he was a friend of God because he did what God asked him to do. See, I'm a friend of Jamie's because Matthew called me up and I said, I'll do it, Matthew, which I'm surprised. I was still shocked that I got to do that. But because of our relationship with Jamie, I said, I'll do that. And it proves my friendship to Jamie and my love for Matthew and Bailey. It's not that I got anything out of it, but I was blessed because when I was up there doing the wedding and I could see their smiles and it was just, it was awesome. The presence of God was there. The peace of God was all over the place up front. And it was just like, oh, this is, this feels amazing. Of course, you have the, their love for each other was part of it, but no, but God was in it. And their, their vows was just amazing time. And it was a blessing. And so I'm thankful for that. And when you allow God, when you, when you, when, when you allow God to be your friend, you, you accept him as your friend, he teaches you how to be a friend. You know, there's certain ways to how we need to be friends, you know. And um, so not only does God want to be your friend, I've thought about this, but he brings friends into your life that you need. You need, we need people in our lives that's going to complement what God is doing in your life. And Jamie, for me, is one of those guys that complements what God's doing in my life, the opportunities that's presented itself. I mean, you know, three years ago, you said, hey, I want you to come and speak. So during this time, I was getting ready to come speak. We was busy at work. And my wife was like, well, we're busy, but, you know, feel like you should go. So we come down here. God's helping. We're sitting in the office. We get the phone call. Three years ago is when, the daughter, when his daughter's beautiful daughters were in that wreck. God knew what was going to happen. He knew that you needed a friend to be there. He orchestrated for me to be, not to orchestrate the wreck. And the, please don't. We've been down this road before. We're not going to go back there. But well, God will take care. He knows what you need. He knows when you need a friend. He'll send it at the right time because he cares about you way more than we can even imagine. You know, and I think in life, the older we get sometimes, the less friends we have. The older we get, the less importance we think we need friends. But in truth of it, we need more friends when we get older. Because we get so wrapped up in what we're doing in life, work. Man, I, you know, for me, growing up, I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't have a whole lot of friends growing up in the school I went in. I was telling Jamie the other night, you know, I grew up in a private school. And um, they actually would tell us now... It was weird, but they would say, you shouldn't hang out with the public school kids. That's not your friends. They shouldn't be there. And so I was like, what are we doing here? What's going on? So 
That's just kind of what we grew up in. I'm like, that's sometimes the greatest, sometimes your better friends are ones that are not in the church because they don't care. They just want to be your friend. They, they don't expect more out of you. They just want to listen. They just want a friend, somebody to talk to, and, and they don't care how many times you served or who did this, you did that in the church. No, no, no. They just want to be your friend. Because sometimes I think we can put, we're friends with people, but we, we, we put things on them. We expect this, we expect that. God doesn't expect anything. He'll put it out there, and you can choose or not to choose. When you choose to, to be his friend, you choose to, to be obedient with him, you're proving his friendship. And the blessings and what you know in life, what you know from him, he'll tell you, he'll, he'll tell you the secrets. He'll tell you the things you need to know because you've allowed him to be the friend that you need. Jonathan's friendship with David in 1 Samuel gives us a clear parallel. I like the parallel things. We rightly think of them as exemplifying friendship, but their story specifically pictures how we can be friends with Christ, the Masonic king. Jonathan was the friend of David, yet David was Israel's anointed king. And when David called on Jonathan to demonstrate fullness, he responded, whatever you say, I will do for you. But let me go back one quick. Go back to Ephesians 1, 6 through 7. So when I said, this doesn't minimize his glory, it magnifies it because it displays the immeasurable riches of his grace. Only grace explains the sovereign king welcoming sinners as his friends. So it says, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us, us in the beloved, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. One more, please. Verse 8. To the praise of his glorious grace, which has he has blessed us in the beloved. Oh, wait, that's six. Go back to eight. Six, seven, and eight, please. Ephesians one. Huh? I can read that right quick. Which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. It says on mine, which he has lavished upon us in all insight, making known to us the mysteries of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. There it is again, guys. Making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose. Though when we become friends with God, no longer is his will a mystery to us. It becomes clear. We want a clear picture of what we're to do. We want a clear picture of where we're going, of what it's all about. When we become friends with Christ, through his grace, he, be, he makes known the mysteries of his will, mysteries of his will according to the, his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. We all, have a, we all have something we're supposed to do. We all have things in our life for God to do to, to, in our calling and in our gifting. And God will make that known. It's no more mystery to us because a friend, he tells him everything. Calls you on the phone. What's up, man? How you been doing? What's going on? How you been? How can I pray for you? And when we spend time with God, like I said, we pick up his attributes, his attitude, his desires, and we learn ourselves how to be a friend. That's how, and we learn it. So David, the, the, the story of David and Jonathan's friendship, Jonathan knew that he was supposed to be the king. It was his place. His dad was king. It was his throne. He knew it. There's no questions asked. But what did Jonathan know? Jonathan knew who David was. He gave it all to be friends with David. He gave it up. And David points us to Jesus as the king, but Jonathan points forward to those who follow Christ as friends. Jonathan said, hey, David, I know who you are. I know there's a benefit in me being your friend more than it is for me being in the throne because it's, not, it's God's will for you to be king. He gave that up to be David's friend. He helped him. He let him know what was going on. He kept him safe. He gave him his armor. He gave everything he needed. And in the end, what did David do? Returned and blessed his family for the friendship. Now, we need to avoid some errors. So some of the errors we need to avoid is calling Jesus chum and buddy and nothing like, you know, that. I'm not into that. As though friendship is trivial, one or, on the other hand, we could also emphasize Jesus' kingship that we neglect his companionship. We could so emphasize his authority that we do not enjoy his affection. But Jesus offers himself to us both, our cosmic ruler and our closest friend. See, sometimes when I was growing up, I felt like Jesus was up here. It was preached that way. And I couldn't reach it. I couldn't become it. It was too hard. 
He said, you know, I'm out. I'm checking out of this deal. I go to church on Sundays, church on Wednesdays to show up when I'm supposed to. If I love God, I was there every time the doors were open. I was told. And I'm like, you know what? I can't get it done. This is, this is too hard for me. I'm a young man. So, but yet, because the authority, I was taught the authority of Jesus, but not the affection. Jesus is very affectionate. He's very, he's very loving. And he wants you to understand that. And you'll understand that when you allow God to be your friend. You'll understand more of, of His will and, and the mysteries and, and how He operates because He's your friend. I want people to know Jesus as their friend. He's a friend of sinners. What comes first? Is it the friend or do we try to get Him saved? What is it? But when we become friends with Jesus, we begin to change. And when we, when we become friends with, with people in our lives, we like, man, there's something different about Jamie. I want to spend more time with Jamie. I want to get to know Jamie a little bit more. Call him on the phone. You'll be like, hey, what is it about you that's different? His name is Jesus. That's what's different. And you earn a person's trust. You begin a relationship with him. And when you have that relationship with that person, then you begin to influence them. When Jesus has a relationship with you, he begins to influence you. But you can't have a relationship if he's just an acquaintance. Oh, yeah, I, I know about Jesus. Yeah, he's a pretty, pretty good guy. He died on the cross. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, but do you really know him as a friend? To the point that he influences your decisions, he influences your life. Where are we at? Do we emphasize the authority? More of the affection. But Jesus offers himself both for our ruler and our closest friend. We were made to be Jesus' friend. How do we cultivate this relationship? First, let's expand our vision of consider how he is the greatest friend to a great sinners. Sinners. He draws near in our suffering. He remains committed even in our stumbling. He's committed to us. He's not going to run away from his issues. He's not going to try away because we messed up. He, none of that. He's right there because why? He's a friend that's going to stick with you no matter what. He doesn't just justify us and then nudge us aside. He welcomes us into the deepest heart. He, the friendship with Jesus is one of his, his greatest desires for him is to be our friend. He told us, he told the disciples that, he demonstrated it, and he's demonstrating it today. He wants to be your friend. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He loved us more than we than more deeper than anyone else ever could. We are closer to his heart than anyone ever has been to ours. Do you hear that? We are closer to his heart than anyone has ever been to ours. As Jonathan Edwards wrote, whatsoever there is or can be that is desirable to be in a friend is in Christ. Let me read that again. Whatsoever there is or can be that is desirable to be in, is in a friend, it's in Christ. And that to the highest degree that can be desired. If we're looking, if we have desires in our life and they're not being meet, met and you're looking for a certain friend, you'll find it in Jesus. And when you find it in Jesus, Jesus is such a great friend that, like I said, he'll bring people along in your life that will compliment what Jesus is doing in your life. It'll be a friend to you. That's how we learn that Jesus is a friend, by being friends to somebody else. When they come to Grace Life, do they find a friend here? Do they find somebody they can confide in? Or do we find churches where, where some churches where they're, they're judged and they don't feel welcomed? Jesus is a welcoming person. He welcomes everybody in that door. Hey, I'm your friend. Why? Because he's already done the job to be their friend and he wants to be accepted to be their friend. And he wants to earn the relationship. He wants to show you how much he loves you. He wants to show you how much he cares for you. That's his desire to do that. Second, call that friendship through communion with one another. Relationships thrive with conversation. Conversation. If, if Jamie and I were friends, but we never talked on the phone, and I never called him, we, we wouldn't be really be friends. But when I come here, he does what I ask him to do. He, I mean, I do what I ask him. He he said, hey, fix this outlet, hang this thing. So I'm helping him at the house because I, I'm his friend. I, the only thing I get out of it is this friendship. That's worth it to me. I, I mean, I wouldn't have to come. I, this, is not, this is not the friend. He asked me to do this, so I'm doing this. And I'm, I'm thankful for this. But this is him complimenting what Jesus is doing in my life, which makes me a better friend, friend for you, and which are grows a relationship. Same thing with Jesus. He'll give you opportunities that's in your life so he said, hey, 
I'm your friend. Here's a great opportunity for you to do this. Here's an opportunity for you to become this friend over here. You'll make a difference in his life. I promise you. I don't know, God. Yes, you have stuff inside you that can be a friend to this person and help him and cheer him up and encourage him. I, I like to encourage people. I like to build them up in the Lord. There's enough things pulling us down that we can be built up in the Lord. Because Jesus wants to be people, a friend of sinners. And if Jesus is called to be a friend of sinners, we are also called to be a friend of sinners. When I, and, and it's just incredible. We do, like I said, but we do free coffee Fridays. And uh, there's so much fun to shake hands and encourage people. And you, you, don't, you can go up there and say, hey, good morning. And you don't have to say, do you love Jesus? There's none of that. If Jesus lives in you, boom, you just bless this guy. Hey, good morning, Jamie. Good to see you, brother. Hey, what's different about that guy? It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's my friend. My friend's influencing me. Man, I have a great friend. Let me tell you about him. Relationships thrive with conversation. As we read, receive, and remember about God's word, we hear him address us as friends, and then we pray. We thank him, we confess our sins to him, and we share our burdens with him. We do this throughout the day, not, re not reporting as servants, but as relating as friends. I like that. We don't report as servants. We, we, we don't report as workers. We report as friends. See, my, my thought is when we become friends, when, when I became friends with Jamie or my buddy Pat, I wanted to do stuff for them because, of their, because they were such good friends to me. I'm like, I want to help them. I, I want to do what I can for them. I want to come to West Virginia and hang out with them and extend my trip as long as I can in between work days and, and stuff like that because I want to hang with them because we're friends. And that's the way God is. You want to hang with God. But you can hang with God among other people at the same time. God doesn't just want you to say, hey, God, you're my only friend. Well, yeah, that's great, but that's not my plan. My plan is for you to be friends with other people. Because the friendship I've given you is not for you. It's for people next to you. It's for people at the gas station, the coffee shop, wherever. That's the friendship that God, that's what we have in our lives, is for other people. The friends that we can be to other people. Then he, so Jesus is a friend that than anyone else could ever be to us. Finally, let's prove our friendship through obedience. Remember, obedience doesn't get you anything. It proves your friend with God. I mean, I, blessings come being, by being obedient. I'm not, I'm going to be careful with that. Don't go off deep on that. But how much, we would, how much would change if we knew that, that the one who loves us so deeply is with us so constantly? Is not his companion, companionship itself one of the greatest deterrents of sin? If our great friend died for our sins, how can we treat them so lightly? See, I mean, what would you think if, if your friend paid for your house? If your friend built you a house and just gave it to you? What would you think about that? What if you think, my, my buddy Pat took me to the Super Bowl when the Chiefs won? Any Chiefs fans in here? They won last year, but then when they played the Eagles, he took me. To the football. He said, hey, John, I got you a, football. I got you a ticket to the Super Bowl. Man, how much is it going to cost? Nothing. Just get in the truck. So we drove all the way to Arizona. He took me to the Super Bowl. I paid for some of the housing and some dinners. But, man, what do you want to do for a guy that does that for you? I'm like, I'll, I'll say, Pat, I'll probably never ever repay you. I don't care. It doesn't matter to him. He is, he is a friend. And he's a friend of God. And because he's a friend of God, he knows how to be a friend to other people. And he's a friend of Jamie's. And see, here's something I was thinking about this today. Not yet. <laughs> but so I was a friend with Jamie before, and, and, and then before Pat knew him. And then when Jamie came to town, Pat got to know Jamie. And, Jamie. and Pat was like, hey, I like Jamie. He's a good guy. And he's a friend of yours, so he's a friend of mine. There's things in common that we all have. Yeah. See, that's the thing. So because Pat was my friend, and he's seen the importance of your friend. He, now he's your friend. See, that's what Jesus is. But he, he's our friend, but he also allows us. To, sorry, I'm thinking. I lost all the thought on that one. Anyway, he loves us so much that he, he wants us to be our friend. So, anyway. Yeah. That's it. Our friendship with Jesus calls other people to friendship with us. And they're, they're not saying, he's not going to say, hey, he's not a good friend for you. Now, if he was, he would tell me that too. But he's seen the importance of our friendship. And because Pat is such a good friend of mine, that he said, hey, I'm going to be a friend of James. So Jesus chose us as friends. He died for us as friends. He caused us to trust in him as our friend. 
We will remain our friend for the endless. We will remain our, and he will remain our friend for the endless ages to come. What a friend we have moment by moment, now and forever in Jesus. And it says in the Bible, when I look this up, what is a friend? What is the Bible's version of a friend? It says the Bible defines a friend as someone who is loyal, helpful, loving, even in difficult times. A true friend is someone who you can trust and respect, who respects you in return. The Bible just, and the Bible describes a friendship in many ways. And Jesus says to his followers, you are my friends. Jesus wants to help the disciples and us to understand what the greatest love really is really like. And he doesn't turn to marriage or sex. He turns to friendship. For Jesus, friendship is a relationship of deep love because he gave it all to be your friend. And he wants to be your friend today and tomorrow and forever. Because I believe, as the Bible says, when we're his friend, we'll know the mysteries of his will and many other things in our life. So thank you today for allowing me to talk about Jesus as your friend. Jamie is my friend. Jesus is our friends. And together, we're just going to have a, we enjoy each other in the kingdom. So thank you so much. Would you stand? We have a word to this song. I want you to contemplate what Jonathan has been talking about for just a few minutes. Jennifer's going to sing a, a song by Cain. You've probably heard it if you listen to Caleb at all uh, about Jesus being your friend. As you contemplate that, you respond how God, whatever He puts on your heart to do. Neil said, stand, come to the altar, thank him. Just be in contemplation of this word friend and what it means. Then I'm going to have Lisa share with you just one second about what God revealed to her during this message. Then we'll see what else the Lord wants to do this morning. Let's just pray, worship, and contemplate as we sing. I don't need a Savior. If you don't know sin and shame, you don't need forgiveness. You never have walked away. This is my story and my life made new. I'm the one who's been set free. And I have found a friend in Jesus. He
you know, when you have an open heart to receive the word and it just blesses you. And, um, you know, and I love the book of John. It's probably one of my favorites. And, and the, just the progression of the book of John, if you read it in the beginning was the word and the word was God and was with God. And as you go through that, and when you got to that scripture friend, it dawned on me there. It's like, you know, God does have to reveal himself to people and to sinners as friends because we thought he was our enemy and he's not our enemy. That's right. So you have to be friend, you know, kind, kindness, compassion. So he reveals himself to people as friendly through me to you as friendly as his friend, one who's held dear, beloved, you know, he's holding you. And then the scripture before that, though, when he calls you friends, when he lays his life down for his friend, the scripture before and the chapter before that, he says, I'm going to send you a helper, a comforter, and he's going to remind you of everything that I've said that, that the father has said. And what the father has said was in first John in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. And so he's going to tell you that that is where our origin was because nothing was made that was made. We were all in him from the beginning. We were created from the Trinity, from the Father, the, you know, not three judges in a courtroom, but three, three friends, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. we're beloved. So if you just read the progression that I, I, I love, you know, you got to be friendly. I love, like you said, when you come up, you don't say, hey, do you know Jesus? No, it says, hey, how are you doing? You know, because that expression of Holy Spirit will come out. Amen. And that's, that's what will come out, where we are his expression. And then whenever people reveal, it's revealed that you're friendly, then it can be revealed that he's father, right? And that's who you are in him because that's the Holy Spirit's going to reveal that. Because sometimes there's a wall already put up. Yeah. And so in order to break through that wall, you got to come across his friend. That's what Jesus did. When he walked up to his disciples and said, hey, he wanted them to follow him. He didn't just say, follow me. He said, hey, you guys are fishermen. Let me help you out catching some fish. He, he broke down that barrier and then thought, who is this guy? Yeah. He made connections. Yeah. Making divine connections, right? So he's your friend. Amen. He's your father. Because servants don't know what they're doing, but this father, the son does. And he's going to tell us those deep secrets. And that's from the beginning. That, that, that just blows my mind anyway. But I love that. So he's a friend of sinners. And that's how he reveals himself. Humanity, he's, he's good, he's kind. He goes deep. Amen. Thank you for tying that together for us. Uh, if you've not had the opportunity to reach in front of you and grab an envelope to put your check or cash in it, you can do that. Put your uh, offering in the kiosk in the back, or you can always give online. Those watching online can use the app, or you can use the text to give whatever uh, you feel the most comfortable with. We are transparent at Grace Life. We don't talk a whole lot about money. We just let you obey the Holy Spirit because he wants to talk to you about giving. But we are very transparent about needs and what have, uh, has come up. Uh, we had to repair our handicap ramp out there. It kind of collapsed in the middle. So we did uh, fix that this past week. We had an air conditioner that went out and the compa capacitor and compressor had to be fixed. And another unit had to be recharged, so we spent $2,400 out of the building fund uh, this past week to fix those things. Uh, just thank you all of you for giving to the building fund that we had money in those uh, funds to, uh, accounts to be able to take care of those. We do have a few other little repairs that are coming up, uh, just to let you know uh, about that. Uh, if you want to give your regular offering, by text to give or online or cash check, just write that to Grace Life. Make sure you mark in the memo line what it is for. If you would like to help uh, towards the expenses for Jonathan, and just bless him this morning, uh, as we like to do for the men of God, women of God that come in and share with us, you can place that on the altar uh, as you leave today. Uh, next week, we'll be back into uh, Jesus, just Jesus. I'll wrap it up for the next three weeks here in August, and uh, we will finish our Just Jesus series. But we're not going to stop talking about Jesus. Amen. And it will just be a different series come September. Uh, we still are looking for a few helpers in Children's Church 
if you would like to volunteer for that there is an application on the table in the lobby just grab one of those and uh, fill that out and give it to myself or to Lisa we'll make sure it gets uh, to the right place every heart clear before we leave this morning thank you for being here worship was incredible I, I love the freedom Amen. Amen. this morning uh, for people to be able to uh, worship God Amen. Are good. But the Lord has blessed you. And the Lord is keeping you. He's caused His face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. He has lifted up His countenance towards you. He's granting you peace. Walk in that this week and distribute it to others. We love you. God bless you. Fellowship with each other and be careful as you go. We'll see you next Sunday.